everyone. So today I'm going to walk you through how you apply to community colleges in Minnesota, as well as our state universities like Winona State, Mankato, and St. Cloud State. I'm going to use Normandale Community College as an example, but every single one of these applications is going to be identical. Um, these are colleges that are not in the Common App. Um, and so what you're going to do to find their application is start with their website. So I just Googled Normandale Community College, and now I'm gonna click on admissions, and this process would be the same whether you're applying to St. Paul College or Hennepin Tech or Winona State. Next, I'm going to hit apply now. And now I'm going to create my star ID which is my username and password that I'm going to use to get in to any community college application or Winona State, St. Cloud, any of those public state universities. So your star ID is really important. It's gonna be a weird combination of letters and numbers. Make sure you write it down and keep track of it because it's pretty hard to get back once you've lost it. Right here, all I need to do on this screen is enter my name, my email address, and then I'm gonna make a password. Right, so I entered in that information. It's now given me my star ID, which like I said, is this weird combination of letters and numbers. I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna put it in a safe space, whether that's in my phone or in my Google Docs wherever I keep my username and password. And right now I'm just gonna copy it because I'm going to need it in a second. All right, so now I'm in the application. This page just asks for my personal information. Any question that doesn't have a red star is not a question that is required to answer. So I'm only required to answer the questions with a red star. You don't have to enter your social security number here. If you do have a social security number, you can put it in. That's gonna make it easier for your um, application to link up with your financial aid later on, but you definitely don't have to do it. Um, I'm gonna skip entering it for right now. And then we're gonna do our date of birth. I'm gonna do 2003, because that's when some of you were born. Oh. Oh, and look, even college counselors make mistakes sometimes. <laughs> okay, um, the veteran status just asks if you've ever been in the military. Uh, if you are married or have a child who's been in the military, you will resp respond appropriately here. All right, and if you're not sure what level of education your parents have, you can just put uh, unknown. It doesn't matter which one you put as your mom or which one you put as your dad. So citizenship information. The, you'll notice that the only options are for people who have visas and people who are US citizens. So even if you have a green card, you're going to put other. If you have DACA, you're going to put other. If you are undocumented, you are also going to put other. Otherwise, if you were born here or um, have naturalized citizenship, then you're going to put U.S. citizen. That's what I'm going to put for this one today. All right, when it asks if you're a resident of Minnesota, it doesn't have, it's not asking about anything to do with legal status or citizenship status. It just wants to know how long you've lived in the state um, or if you live in the state. So you're gonna put yes, you live here. And then how long have you lived here? It doesn't have to be exact. Don't get super hung up on trying to remember what the exact date was that you moved here. If you've lived here your entire life, you're just gonna put your age. So let's say I'm 18 years old. I've lived here my entire life. I'm just gonna do 18 years and zero months. All right, so this is where you're going to enter your address. I would recommend just doing your permanent address unless you're in a situation where you're getting mail at one place but you live somewhere else. In that case, I would do uh, where you live as your permanent address and where you get mail as your local address. I'm just gonna enter in a permanent address though. So I click that button and then click add and I'm entering 
the information for the school. And again, don't have to answer questions that aren't required. And then I just hit add. Oh no, whoops. That's what I get for using the autofill, trying to make my life easier. Okay, so my address is now there and I can hit next. Phone number, just enter that in. You only have to enter one. If you don't have a home phone number, that's okay. You are currently a high school student, so you'll click yes. And then we're gonna scroll down and we're going to play the fun game of did they add in Hiawatha this year? So we have to scroll all the way down to the ages. Be glad you go, don't go to like Southwest or Washburn. They have a lot longer way to scroll. And there we are, Hiawatha Collegiate High School. You all will graduate in June of 2021. So you can put 06, 2021. And then your GPA. Your GPA doesn't have to be exact. Um, they're going to see what your exact GPA is on your transcript. If you're not sure, you can always give me a quick text. Um, but honestly, it's okay to take your best guess if you don't know for sure, rather than like delay your application and wait for me to respond. So I'm gonna say I have a 2.98. All right, so this is the part that some people get a little bit confused about. This is asking how many years of each subject you will have taken by the time you graduate. So with English, we're gonna put four because by the time you graduate, all of you will have taken four years of English classes. That's like your composition, uh, your literature, AP Lane and Comp, any of those count as an English class and you will have all done four years of English by the time you graduate. Next up is math classes. Elementary algebra is algebra one. All of you have taken algebra one, so you can put a one there. Intermediate algebra is algebra two, so you can also put a one there because all of you will have taken that by the time you graduate. And same thing with geometry. Again, we're putting in the number of years that you've taken that class. Now, some of you have, may have taken pre-calculus. You can put a one there. If you're in college prep statistics or AP calculus, this year you're gonna put that under other math or if you're in consumer math. So I'm just gonna put a one for other math and there we go. All right, so biology is biological science. All of you will have taken that by the time you graduate, so you're gonna put a one there. Same thing with chemistry. Most of you took that your sophomore year. Now, physical science is not the same thing as physics. So most people will have taken physics by the time they graduate, so we'll put a one there. Physical science, honestly, is only applicable to students who transferred in from Hiawatha. If you took a class called like natural science or physical science or science nine during your ninth grade year, that's probably what it would be. And then if you're in AP biology this year, that's where you'd put the other science is one. So social studies, everyone has taken US history. So you'll put a one there. And then this is kind of gonna depend. So if you've attended Hiawatha, all four years, you took civics your freshman year, so that's one year. You took some kind of world history your sophomore year, and then you're going to take AP government your senior year. So we're gonna put a three for other social studies. And if you transferred into Hiawatha, your other social studies classes you may have taken might be like geography. So you could put that like as a one there. Um, sometimes people have taken an economics class that would go in the other social studies category. All right, so this is like our electives area. Now the main electives for like the arts that we offer are theater, that's gonna be drama. Visual arts would be art with Miss Sochiwa and music would be band. So let's say I took one year of band and two years of art. Remember, it's the number of years you took a class. 
And then for Spanish, um, we don't offer any other languages. If you attended another high school before Hiawatha and took a language there, you would enter the number of years. I'm gonna say I took just one year of Spanish. All right, so for this part, this is what you would add in like if you had gone to college already and taken college classes. So this is stuff like PSEO. Um, this would be like if you had done a semester at a different college and were going to transfer. That doesn't really apply to anyone in this year's senior class. It doesn't apply to AP classes. So for the, right now, I'm gonna skip this part and hit continue to confidential. Now, all of these questions are questions um, just about demographic information and about who you are. All of them are optional. You can enter as many or as few of them as you want to. It's totally up to you. I'm just gonna skip all of them, but if you want to provide this demographic information, you certainly can. All right, so now we're gonna enter our major in. I plan on rolling in the fall semester of 2021. That's what the earliest that all of you would start. You're all going to put fall semester 2021. All right, and then for community, this is spe specific to community colleges. Um, if you were applying to like Mankato or St. Cloud or Winona State, you would probably just see information here about the type of major that you wanted. Um, this is specific to community colleges only. So if you are intending to go to a community college and then transfer on and get a four-year degree, you're going to click this first option that says earn associate's degree and transfer. If you are intending on just getting your associate's degree and being done, you're gonna click that one. And in a few certain cases, you're gonna click this option that says earn occupational certificate or diploma. You've probably already talked to me about that if that's your option. I'm gonna say that I'm interested in earning my associate's degree and then being done. I plan on enrolling as a full-time student Full-time versus part-time just means the number of classes you're taking. There is no advantage to being a part-time student. Full-time students are the ones who get financial aid, um, and that also means you're gonna get your degree done a lot more quickly if you're a full-time student. All right, so this is where we add a major. Campus location. So they're gonna, the, this is a question that's gonna depend on where you're applying. Um, usually you're just gonna pick the one that's the name of the college. Like if you don't know what it is, don't pick it, just do the name of the college. So Normandale Community College. Preferred delivery method put on campus. Even if you're like, is a school doing virtual learning right now? Still just put on campus. And then your, desired pathway. If you're not sure yet, that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and say I know that I'm interested in food and beverage management. Um, but if you don't know, that's okay. It's okay to change your mind later too. This isn't like something that they hold you to or that they're like, you can never change your mind. It's honestly just information for them so that they can make sure that you get connected with the right advisors, but it's not something that you're locked into. And I'm gonna say, then it'll also, depending on what you pick here, it'll have different options like associate's degree. The only option for this one is a certificate. And then I'll hit add this major, and now I'll go next. So again, I intend to enroll at Normandale Community College. I have not attended before. And every school here is just gonna have a list of different clubs and activities that you might be interested in joining. You don't have to select any of them. Again, this is just to make sure you're getting connected with the right people once you're on campus. So I'm gonna say I'm interested in the math club. And I'm interested in ping pong club. Why not? That sounds like a fun way to spend an afternoon. Um, and you can add as many or as few of these as you're interested in. All right, so if you're applying to community colleges, this last page is going to have some information about different transfer pathways. So basically, like getting your degree at Normandale and then continuing on to get a bachelor's degree at a college that a that community college has transfer agreements with. 
basically it just means that you would be interested these questions are all asking if you're interested in getting more information about how you would make that transfer process happen so i'm gonna say i'm not interested in metro state but maybe i am interested in mankato i'm not interested in southwest state but maybe i am interested in augsburg again it's totally just up to you there's this question about STEM. You can just hit, I'm, I'm not interested. These questions are also not required, so you could skip them as well. And then how did you first hear about Normandale? I'm gonna say I heard about it from my counselor. Again, you can put whatever you want. You also don't have to answer these questions because they're not required. All right, so this is where I scroll through and I make sure that everything I put in is correct. And now I'm gonna continue to submit. So I'm not actually gonna submit this application. I already have gone to college. I'm not gonna do that again, but I will show you the boxes that you need to check. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you check this like gray box one here. And then you also check this box right here. Don't enter a promo code. There is no promo code. And then you're gonna type in your star ID password and hit submit and then you're done. Um, know that sometimes it'll say like there's a $20 fee attached. I can't remember if it usually says that on this screen or the next screen. Don't worry about that $20 fee. If you want to pay it yourself, you can, but don't feel any pressure to. We have these forms online that we can fill out called uh, fee waivers, which basically says that you don't have to pay the application fee. So if you don't want to pay that $20, let me know as soon as possible so we can get that form filled out. But other than that, you're good to go. That's how you apply to community college or the state universities in Minnesota. It's super easy. I did that all in about 15 minutes. Very easy. Done. Let me know what questions you have. I'll see you later.